Rosina, I am a crochet designer and I live in the southwest of the UK. Today is not going to be one of my normal podcasts. I'm only going to talk about this finished object, which is my version of the JW Anderson cardigan that Harry Styles wore and is everywhere at the minute. Um, I wanted to do a video solely on this because I, I've got potential to blather on quite a lot for a long time just about this one project um, and I don't want it to dominate a normal podcast so I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about how I made it, what I think of it and how you can make it too if you want. Yesterday I was very near finished when I decided I was going to just do a video on this and this alone. Um, and well, but, but when I did that, I quickly pulled out my phone and started recording on that where I was in the process at that time, which was basically all the finished pieces but not put together. So yesterday I filmed a video where I explained how I was going to put it together, what I was going to do. I did a brief sort of demonstration of how I fixed the cuffs onto the sleeves. I think the sleeves were already seamed at that point. And then this morning I filmed a quick tutorial, I hope it's quick and clear because I have a tendency to waffle, um, on how to do the button band. The button band I did slightly different to the cuffs, I've got a separate tutorial that um, you can follow to make the cuffs but I'll squeeze in a tutorial for the button band in a bit. I really like it. <laughs> um, sorry, I am sat on a plastic sheet, which is why I'm going to crinkle. I, I will measure, I'll put the measurements, I'll put the measurements in a blog post because I haven't measured it yet. I will put loads of information in the blog post as well. So if you want to make one, um, not only um, obviously watch and listen to this video, um, but also have a read of all the details so that if you want to make one, just like make one up rather than follow a, a pattern, then you've got all the, excuse me, you've got all the information that you need. Um, God, I did film this once already and I started talking in detail about the number of stitches and the yarn and how I started putting it all together. Um, it just sounded like I was rambling a load with facts and figures and I, yes that's helpful, you need to know that stuff. But I'm not sure you need me quick firing it at you. Um, it won't be easy to follow. I will go over it, I just don't want to just like go bam, 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 have all this information because it's just too much. So I'm going to try and take it very slowly. But it might mean that I miss out some information and just put it as a written thing to accompany this because video tutorials are great and everything but quite often people neglect to mention every single thing and when they do if I watch a video tutorial, I want to hit a link and see it all written out. Each to their own, I guess, but that's my preference. Okay. I'll show you this. I'll show you this. Look. One thing at a time. Here is my chart for the colour orders and the stitches I used for each square. Yes. I worked the main body all in one piece. In retrospect, I would probably not do that. I have drawn some faint lines down here <laughs> and here. That is where oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Look at the screen. That is where I'd recommend you make these panels separately to the back. Whereas I did everything as one piece of fabric, which was a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I would consider splitting it into three. So you've got... In the video I add on in a second, 
um, or a minute or depending on how long I talk for you will I will show you the main piece and how it looks and um, what else did I film yesterday yeah the main piece how I was going to put them all together and then how I attached the cuffs so there is a couple of tutorials embedded in this video just for extra detail and links to other stuff should you need it um, so the sleeves I worked as two separate panels. What I did, what I did was start with the same colour as the cuffs so that my panels were worked from the sleeve upwards to wherever they finish. One, two, three, four. They finish here. They're a little bit over long. Um, I might add... Um, some suggestions for making your squares slightly smaller or slightly bigger depending on what size you are yeah so i i i started with a row of half trebles that's uk half trebles us double half doubles because us terms and uk terms are different um which is that row there so that when i attached the cuffs it was relatively sort of smooth looking if that makes sense and that gave me a foundation upon which to work all my squares as well and I did the same thing um oh <laughs> I thought I'd flashed my boobs then <laughs> I hadn't did the same thing here as well so there's a foundation row before I sewed on the ribbing I've taken a photograph of this so that um you can have a look in more detail it's got they, it indicates which squares have um, different stitches because it's not all one stitch, some are different. And then also um, I cut the corners off the two top pieces because I wanted this shape of neck. So in order to do that you just decrease, you decrease every row so that it it comes in and creates this shaping at the neck otherwise you're left with it coming in here which is fine for the original um, but I didn't have enough yarn to do a collar so that meant I had to do something different which is no collar and some shaping but that's fine this this goes button band goes oh, I said like what's it called edge goes all the way around in that one worked in one piece whoop, whoop. What else do you need to know? I used Aran weight yarn, six millimeter hook. My squares are about five inches square. Some of them, because they're all different stitches, uh, came out in slightly different sizes. So when you've got the front loop only squares, that's one of the stitches I used, um, they came up slightly squat. Uh, the ones where I have the animal print, um, the tension was a little bit uh, pulled in places just because of the colour changes. Um, so they were slightly different, but once you've put it all together, it's fine. Like once it's on, on and being worn, you can't really tell. But um, what did I want to show you? I haven't sewn in all my ends, so let's turn it inside out. That's see, I float my yarn when it comes to the animal print ones. I've got um, a chart made up for that, okay? So you don't need to make it up yourself, just follow the chart. See, I do have some more ends to sew in, but not many. Um, so I've mentioned about doing the front loop for some of the squares. Because it's a half US double, um, you get end up with three loops. Don't worry, I'll put a tutorial link to a scarf pattern I've just released. It uses the same stitch and um, you can just follow that, it's fine. Um, rather than me trying to explain it to you. Ugh. So that's one of the stitches I've used. I've also used a stitch called the Hound's Tooth Stitch, which is essentially US terms one double, one single, one double, one single, one double, one single. 
and then when you re return you do a double in the single and a single in the double um, not to be confused with the hound's tooth pattern although you can do a nice hound's tooth stitch pattern with this if you alternate rows alternate rows of colour which is why it's called the hound's tooth stitch um, but it's not the same hound's tooth pattern in the original uh, JW Anderson cardigan I'm getting tired now um, so this isn't a how-to crochet video, but it is just sort of like a how I made this cardigan video. Um, and what I like about it, not only have I used loads of my Aran stash, which was just like, maybe if I was lucky, just like with this blue I had over 100 gram, I had over a ball of, of yarn left. I can't remember what project it was from now. But some of it, like literally, I didn't even have 100 grams of each colour. So, well, it was just sort of a mishmash. I was never going to use it in anything other than something probably quite patchworky. Um, it's all Aran weight, but different blends. So I'm not really fussed about whether or not it's alpaca or wool acrylic blend. Or I think one of them is totally acrylic. This is like... 20% wool, 80% acrylic, this one's 50-50, you know, I've not been fussed about that, I'm not yarn snob, I don't care, it's all gone in there, um, so it's nice and boxy, relatively cropped, and not so enormous as the original, which I think is too big and too chunky. So, I so what I'm going to do next is pop in the next lot of stuff so that you can see. I hope it's helpful. I feel kind of guilty that I didn't do a proper how, sort of how to make tutorial. But actually it would have taken a very long time. So the people that make those tutorials for big garments kudos to them because even sort of this chat and the other bits of footage that I'm going to include still takes a while to put together so um, I don't know how they do it and don't know how they do it so smoothly and so streamlined either it's just not my style right so going to past me you're going to um, learn some more stuff okay I'll see you in a bit I did all the squares as one whole panel, then I attached the ribbing afterwards. I've done it, probably a glutton for punishment here. I did it all in one piece, splitting for where I was going to put the sleeves. Now, if you do not want to be this ambitious, then do it in three separate panels. So this is one front panel here. So I'd advise doing that separately to the back section, which is four by five. And then this is the other panel. I mean, I literally worked all the way along, all the way back, doing all of these detailing and stuff like that as I went. So the back. So then, yeah, I attached the ribbing, which is slightly narrower than the main section of that piece because you want it to draw in a little bit. So I've done it about four inches shorter than that main um, width. Same goes for the sleeves as well. So you can see them coming in. That's because this ribbing section is narrower than the sleeve section. The sleeves I made as um, two separate panels and then I stitched all the way down here with the right size facing so basically I did it inside out so that's my seam I use a whip stitch which I can show you in a sec and then once it was stitched down here then I stitched on the sleeve so here's my other sleeve and I want to put the wrist 
found on the cuff which is looking like that so it's made it in one long strip and I stitched it together down here and again I think it is about four inches shorter than my sleeve and I th I've counted these and it's 26 rows of half trebles in the very front loop only I will link a separate tutorial for how to do that um, in the shape of a scarf pattern that I've got but it's the same stitch so um, just follow that and it's like literally the same okay so I'm going to use this long end to sew onto the cuff um, onto the uh, sleeve this sleeve is inside out and I want to sew so it's inside out so I'm going to tuck that in there and I'm going to use loads and loads of stitch markers to pin it into place but as you can see it is smaller so we're just going to ease it okay these are my stitch markers and I'm going to use those to attach the cuff to the wrist find the seam and line it up with the seam of the sleeve Make sure your long tail is in the right place because you don't want it on the underside and then you can't use it to sew with. So pin that one in place. I'm just going to fold it in half, find the centre, find the centre of this and match and stick my next safety pin in stitch marker then it's just a question of eyeballing it making sure it's all even so you can ease it in there's not going to be a bit where it's stretched out not going to be a bit where it's all bulked together you just place all your stitch markers So then you can sort of you can sew it without worrying that it's going to move all over the place. That should be enough. So we are working inside out. Needle that fits fat yarn. This is Aaron, so it's not mega bulky or anything, but. There's nothing worse than trying to fight with a needle and a bit of yarn. Then just whip stitch the two together. So I go in through both loops of the foundation chain of my sleeve and then find a suitable home in the rib. So usually that's catching a couple of different stitches so that it's properly secure and you just go all the way around I don't think you need to worry too much and that's it pretty much so once I've done this it will look like my other sleeve and then I'll attach them to the main event. So in much the same way as the cuffs to the sleeves, I will ease the sleeves into this after I've sewn across here to join the shoulders. Then it'll start resembling a cardi. God, it's going to be wide. Wide, boxy is all the rage, so that's fine. And right at the end, which I'm not going to show you how to do because I'm going to do it tonight in front of the telly. And that is do a rib all the way around the edge, including the shaping across the back of the neck and down again. And hope that I've got enough yarn because I've just got one ball and that's it. So wish me luck. And then... 
hopefully tonight I'll have a finished cardigan. You'll soon see, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, back to future me. I've worked a rib from here. And then gone all the way around and back down this side I've done buttonholes not hard I promise before I show you how to do the buttonholes I'm just going to show you how I started this it's not difficult but um, it is easier to get shown I've done it a slightly different way to how I did this rib but don't worry about it in the yarn you've chosen to do your your rib section in for around the front panels um, you need to attach it to the very first stitch so I just pull it through it's fine because you'll sew this in anyway and chain nine Work in the back bumps of your chains so you've got a neat edge. Skip the first bump and work into the second. And then work half trebles in each bump along. You end up looking like this, okay? So you've got this attached to the base of your your band. You want to join it to the band with three slip stitches. One, two, three. And then we're going to work back up. So you turn the work and then much like the other ribbing, you work into these front loops of the half treble. And I am using UK terminology, by the way. So a half treble is in fact a half double if you use American terms. Unlike this ribbing, I decided to stop doing the chain one at the beginning of rows. It actually made a really big difference um, with this one. It's a slightly looser edge and this one is more rounded. I mean, well, I say it makes a big difference. Maybe you don't think so. And it's basically a repeat of that. You just do exactly the same. You go up and down, up and down, up and down with the, and then you're joining after each round when you meet back at the edge with three slip stitches. And that's it. When I, I, I will make a note that the, the last one nearest you is. A bit weird looking and I found I always skip that top one but I found that it doesn't matter if I work my hook into this one or this one it's fine whatever which I know sounds really lax but honestly crochet is really forgiving so kind of like you can cheat your way through this it's fine no one will notice Okay, so um, you just keep going and then eventually it looks like that. Just bear in mind, what because I've started on this side, um, all your slip stitches are going to show like that. So just be careful which side you do your slip stitches. So if you start on this side with 
this but the outside facing you and here is the ribbing so this is going to be the if I turn around I'm wearing it it's the right side panel um, it depends on whether or not you want your stitches to show do a few rows and have a look are these showing on the inside or the outside you can always rip it back and start again if you've got it wrong or you make a feature out of it whatever right so I'm not actually using the green so let's pretend that never happened so you've worked all the way around the collar and back down again you've started making some button bands at a point where you want to have buttons um, I've just guessed I don't know if this is going to be the ideal location for my first button haven't got a clue we'll just have to wait and see um, so I started my, my um, buttonholes and I've got five buttons so I'm going to make five buttonholes Oops. and um, I've done three and I'm going to make I'll show you how I did um, how I did those so I'm ready to make a buttonhole um, I'm really sorry if you can hear my budgie he's started to get chatty he might start talking a bit more in a minute so start as you might a normal row so half treble in the first front loop and then two more bearing in mind my band is eight stitches across so do the first three then you want to skip the next two and chain two instead so we're not going to work in that one we're not going to work in that one you want to do the last three and then do your three slip stitches I just sort of plop them at even intervals what I think is about right so I'm working back the other way now and I'm going to do the first three stitches as normal the third stitch is sort of located up here in the chain as I said crochet is really forgiving so you can bang it anywhere really and then two stitches in that chain space that you made and then carry on as normal and then that's your buttonhole made my, um, my amount of rows in between buttonholes is nine I just I thought that was probably about right but to be honest with you hmm, I've just sort of guessed <laughs> which is my normal way this is very much made up uh, without really much of a plan so I won't know if it's worked until I reach the end I won't even know if the whole cardigan looks all right until I've whacked the sleeves on haven't tried it on yet don't know haven't got a clue Okay, so before I go, what you could expect from the accompanying um, written information is some extra photos, um, not showing any techniques, but just sort of the W photo of this, for example. There will be a couple of photos, probably, of the tangle I got myself into. There's a lot of yarn being used at any one time in the in my method you may wish to mix and match actually and make your square separate stitch all together and then jump into sort of how I do some of the other bits uh, or give it a go yourself I don't know I also um, properly did a chart which I for the animal print which I put on the written notes and um, I didn't say earlier, but yeah, I did an animal print rather than hands tooth stitch, hands tooth print pattern fabric, um, just because I wanted to mix it up a bit and be unique. 
Um, don't want to have it the same as everybody else. What else can you expect? Information on how I made the button band, probably. Just row counts and stuff, stitch counts. Stitch counts for each square and how many rows they were. And probably some hints on how to make them bigger, smaller. Stuff like that. I don't know. What else? If I think of it, I'll put it in the notes, okay? And hopefully there'll be enough. If not, then please do ask and I will try and answer as soon as I can. Um, certainly over the next sort of, um, I can say over the next couple of weeks, you know, once, when I've hit publish, I do like to sort of look out for comments um, that have been made recently. I guess if it's like 2024 and you're watching this, if the world hasn't imploded, and you leave a comment, uh, YouTube may not notify me, so I might not say it's so soz. Um, but you can, uh, I don't know, find me somewhere else, I expect, and ask me there. I have no idea. I can't predict the future. I don't know. Right. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you liked that, then do think about subscribing and give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, there's always Patreon and... I have a Kofi account as well. I will leave links to all. Okay, thank you so much. Cheerio. Bye bye.